Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Teenagers in Space, where today Cat has to figure out a way of climbing to the top of an arc that its inhabitants have sabotaged and barricaded all the staircases on. Uh, clearly they weren't too happy with uh, Comrade Leader MacArthur's glorious five-year plan. It turns out that expecting people to work ridiculous hours for no money whatsoever with only a vague promise that things will be better at some point in the future only works on Earth, not on Mars. Well, anyway, with uh, Sarah injured, we've basically climbed as far as we can go. Well, I say we. Sarah's climbed about as far as she can go. So it's up to me to find a way up and restore power to the elevators. At least I think that's the theory. So, well, hang on, the game's telling me to look. Look at what? The side of a door? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's happening here. I know I need to get through that door. And there was another beam splitter in here, in the pharmacy. That I haven't needed to use yet, which I suspect I'm probably going to need to use here in order to get that door powered open. So I need two points of power for that. Well, let's just set this beam splitter down here right now, because I'm clearly going to have to redirect power to it from the stream point down the other end of the corridor. So, back to the stream point down the other end of the corridor. I need to maintain power to that stream point there because that's opening the door that I'm going to need to fire this beam through to the second beam splitter. That should be enough to open that door. Alright, too much power. That's fine. We have a resistor down here that we're not using anymore. Since I don't need to get into the pharmacy again. That has done it. Okay, uh, now it makes the wall. Let's just have a quick look in here. I feel like I've missed something. Oh yeah, that uh, ASE access point. Oh no, it's all right uh, because they they mentioned that that was different to the other ASE ports. But my ASE is a special one. It's the same as the one that Isaac has, and it has access to different things. She was actually able to open that, you know cutscene in... Hang on a minute. Is this a nursery? This is a nursery. They built a nursery in the medical mm. wing. Or a kindergarten. Oh yeah, MacArthur wanted to get everybody pregnant. Didn't, well, not personally. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he did. But he wanted all the female colonists to start spitting babies out, didn't he? Make lots of little Martians. It's all part of his glorious five-year plan. I wonder how popular that idea was. There you are. I mean, about three others have been looking for you. Aren't you a bit too big for that chair? <laughs> these chairs have gone unused for all these years, Isaac. Why is that? A lot of people are fearful of what might happen if they conceive here. Yeah. We still don't know what complications could arise. Humanity evolves because we adapt, not because we stay inert in the face of adversity. If we never try, we'll never know. That's the price we pay. Do you have a family? On Earth? Yes. What do you need, Isaac? <laughs> the, the, the dust storm hit Herschel hard. Uh, until the damage is repaired, we won't have any alloys to continue the housing project. What about Odom? Uh, we're drafting up a ration plan to see us through the next few months, but, uh... It leaked, and... People are refusing to work. I'll talk to Rosa. This homeward nonsense has gone on long enough. W w why didn't you let her have the psychiatric ward? She could help people. She didn't try to help people. She tried to find weaknesses in the fence. But I'll handle Rosa. Once again, glorious comrade leader MacArthur somehow inexplicably surprised that the doctor that he kidnapped and dragged to Mars against her will. <laughs> Um, 
somehow isn't loyal to him and wants to return to Earth. And is encouraging other people to want to do the same. He's not much of a people person, MacArthur, is he? It's like he understands things. I mean, he understands people enough to get them to do what he needs them to want to do. You know, he understands propaganda, but he just, it's like... It's like you read about people in a book, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and, and he thinks he understands them because of that. Right, we made it. Now what? I mean, there's probably only really one way to go here. And it's going to be that way. Not like we're going up again. I have to admit, I've actually forgotten what it is that I'm supposed to be doing in this place, other than, you know, going up. So now where are we going? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. I think I was probably supposed to make that jump. <laughs> <laughs> So how... Right, that's where I need to be. Wow. I'm not even halfway. But now I'm kind of stuck on this ledge. And yes, we're going to die. Okay, right. We'll, we, that's okay. Nobody saw that. It's fine. We'll do this again. But this time without the... Missing the jump part. Oh, it's put us back here. That's fine. I don't have to climb all the way up the wall again. Where exactly is it I'm supposed to be going? Because there's a door there. How do I make that? Oh, there's a climbing thing. Right, so that's obviously where I'm supposed to be going. It's a thing for climbing on. So let's climb it. Right, made the jump. Let's let's go. I don't actually mind these climbing sections too much. They're kind of quite therapeutic. Because they had nothing like this in the original game. I mean, other than these climbing sections, the two games are still very similar. Well, except that, you know, this one's on Mars and not the moon. And this one has climbing sections. And in this one you've got actual live crewmates to talk to. Uh, you're not 100% completely alone and isolated. Oh, and in this one there's none of the oh my god, oh my god, I'm about to run out of oxygen and die moments. They, they haven't made that part of it. Okay, so the two games are completely <laughs> unlike each other except for the basic concept. Fine. They've got the stream power thing. They had that in the original game as well. I'm not sure how much the uh, actually having a team. I don't know if that improves or detracts from the original. Because, I, I mean, that sense of isolation, of being completely alone, I think was a, a large part of what made the atmosphere of the original work. And you don't have that sense of isolation in the sequel. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm just saying the idea of having a team, which is, you know, it's one of the things that they did to make the sequel distinct from the original game, rather than having you isolated and alone, you've got a team with you, although in certain sections like this, the team are elsewhere. But the team is there, you know, you're not alone. At any point, Kat could call them up, talk to them on the radio. You know, she's not alone on Mars. And the sense of being alone on the moon, I think, was a large part of what made the original game so good. You don't have that here. You do have a team. The thing is, I mean, that's a bold design choice. But it's not necessarily a bad idea. The thing is, it's going to sink or swim based on the quality of your teammates. Now, I like Ryan, and I liked Claire. I'm not sure about Sarah though. There's just, there's something about Sarah. I mean, the game set her up as Cat's hero. Um, as the only survivor of the moon mission from the first game. But Sarah's made it abundantly clear that she's got no love for Cat's father, Isaac. And uh, I don't know, just beyond that, there's something about Sarah. Oh, a stream point. I've never understood the logic behind these things being welded away like that. Oh, but jingles, they're for emergency power projection. Well, yeah, but wouldn't... Wouldn't that be something that you'd want easy access to in emergency? What was that? Oh, I've done it. That was it. Power to the elevator. 
Hey, check me out. I got mad skills, yo. I do actually. That's why Cat was up here and not Ryan, because Ryan doesn't know how to point a thing at a thing. <laughs> I'm the one with the pointing things at things skills. That is the actual argument that Cat used with Ryan in the last episode. She's the stream engineer. She's the one that knows how to point things at things. That's why she should be the one to climb up and fix the elevator. Speaking of which... Oh, Cat's come back down for the other two rather than going up to the bridge alone to try to get answers about her dad. Good girl. It's nice to see that she understands that she's actually part of a team for a change. I'm gonna get some water. You're right. Well, for some reason, I've got the body model of a teenager like you, but the head and face of an elderly car crash victim. But yeah, other than that, I'm fine. The same type of cryo beds that I was in on the moon. Oh. I really tried to fix the MPT with the last bit of helium three there was left. Same bit of helium three that your dad needed to jumpstart the Ark and bring you here. caused a five-year blackout. One man. One choice. It affected everyone. He never intended to cause a blackout. Having good intentions isn't hard, Kathy. Plenty of well-intentioned people have single-handedly caused so much destruction. The hard part is knowing the difference between what's right and what's wrong. Claire always knew. Just hope you do too. She's not wrong. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions for a very good reason. Good people do bad things. All the time. You know what this place could really do with? More barricades. fiction machine, all right. I think we can safely assume who created this. All right, let's split up. And do what? Why? What are we splitting up for? What? What? You gotta do better with these instructions, Sarah. I'll see if I can crack the main terminal. Ryan, check if we can use that elevator to bypass the stairway. Got it. What do you want me to do? Maybe you can figure out what this thing actually does? Sure as hell is it meant for flight. I'll get that done. Right, so hang on. Ryan's checking to see whether or not the elevator's still switched on. Sarah's having a look at the computer to see if somebody left themselves logged in, and I have to figure out what the alien machinery's for. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a fair and even distribution of labour. How come I get the easy jobs? <laughs> Oh, what's this? It looks like a thing. This looks like a water pump system. Yeah, you might be right. Is that what's pumping through that big wall in the middle? Just regular old water? It's a closed pipeline that keeps recycling over and over. Oh, right. So there are just a bunch of things that I need to look at. Here's another thing. Sarah, I think this is the MPT alignment unit for the Ark. We can use it to reconnect with Ark Lagos when we're ready for it. Good. Right, two things down, several things to go. 
What's with all the green TVs? They don't appear to be a thing. Does anyone know why this water looks so... Pretty? If I recall from my days of college, I think that's plankton. Plankton? Yeah, we used to have beaches that would light up the same way at night. Sure. No, really. I saw it on one of our first trips together. Didn't we, honey? Hmm? She was a bit more enthusiastic about it back then. There's no way this elevator works. And what makes you so confident? Really? With our track record? We'll see about that. The stream receiver is destroyed. Huh. Till we reconnect Art Labos. It's not going anywhere. Then I'm afraid the Panopticon will have to wait. Panopticon. Hey, honey? Panopticon, isn't that a, a term for something like a, a central overlook tower? Hmm? Sarah's default response to everything up here seems to be, hmm? She's not being much used to us alive right now. Oh, apparently Sarah herself is a thing. Sarah, can we talk about what you said downstairs? I think that... Now's not a good time. I need to focus. Okay. Re really? Step five of six in figuring out what the green alien thing is was talking to Sarah about her feelings. Ayla, you got a readout on the irradiance from these mirrors. This is what I think it is. 600 watts from the setting sun. That's impressive. I'm in. Come check it out. If I understand their OS, I should get some analytical data if I press this. Are you guys reading what I'm reading? This machine completely converts atmospheric input into the chemical compound of Earth. Conversion efficiency is close to lossless. <sighs> this might be our mother load. I mean, this technology could restore Earth's atmosphere. We could heal our planet. Well, Earth could definitely use a couple of these oversized bad boys. <sighs> Wait, so this thing sucks in Martian air and it turns out Earth air? At a almost 100% efficiency rate. Is that what they're saying? I think that's what they're saying, but that's not good enough. An increased oxygen signature. Could that mean? People. Well, then we should go and check it out right away. We need to finish our assessment because- But we're losing precious time. For what? To find out what happened. Shouldn't one of us scout ahead? If there are colonists still alive, we have no idea how they'll react to our presence. We need to be prepared. Agreed. Things haven't exactly looked peachy so far. If I could just take the rover, get to the facility, we can use that Kathy. information. We're going over there tomorrow as a team, prepared. It's an order. Sarah's right, Cat. We need to get some rest after... After everything. There's a room in the medical wing, with some beds. I'll take first watch, you two get some sleep. Yep, Kat's acting like a bratty teenager again. But, I mean, she is a bratty teenager, so... <laughs> Somebody, um... Oh, hang on. Sarah. case what, what are they talking about I was about to comment on how well she is acting like a bratty teenager and not as part of a, an astronaut team but the other two are keeping something from her as well What's... Because somebody made a comment in the previous video that I thought was pretty amusing about cats bratty behavior because they keep There's going Hang on. I can't wait to hear it They keep going on about how yeah, you've got to get in there somehow. Cat was the top of her class in astronaut school, and somebody said, "Yeah, it was a class of one, and she almost came second. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, okay, so we're sending Ayla into the vents again. Although sending an Ayla into the vents would be a lot easier if Ayla would stop getting in the way of the laser. She keeps doing this. Meh. Alright, whatever. Anyway. Which way are we going? Oh, hang on. Ayla has a flashlight. There it is. Right, so anyway, we're making the big deal about how Kat has no sense of teamwork and she's putting her own personal agenda ahead of the mission, but um, that seems to be cutting both ways. What are Ryan and Sarah keeping from? Me. I'm not sure I want to. We had to have some sort of strategy. Oh, well, it would be nice to know in advance that this was going to be it. Only me and Maria knew. We didn't want to alarm anyone. Oh, so when, when would I find out? As soon as you want me to shoot someone's face off? No. No, I was going to tell you. I just... I had to make sure that Kathy wouldn't find out. Sorry, please. No, 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 no. This is not an anxiety moment. What do you think is going to happen if we find any of the Lunar Council alive? You think they're just going to come along peacefully? But that's why Maria wanted Kathy here to begin with, isn't it? To at least get Isaac to come peacefully. Yeah. Plan A. This is Plan B. Case of guns. I have to admit, I thought it was going to be a nuke. I know, it's a drastic Plan B, and I'm sorry that I didn't tell you. Please, please don't tell Kathy. Secrets within secrets. It's like this entire team is just designed to fail from the start. Claire was the mission commander, she must have known about the guns. Clearly Sarah did. But Ryan and Kat did. We should get some rest. Oh, no, she's coming out. We have to head back here, though. Quick. In a quick, they're coming. They really were scraping the bottom of the barrel when they put this team together, weren't they? Everybody on this team has different priorities. They're all keeping secrets from each other. And none of them appear to understand simple concepts like the chain of command. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, stick around, and we may find out in the next episode. In the meantime, hope you've enjoyed this one, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.